Interest rates are on the rise. I'm sure your Facebook feed is blowing up about how you should buy now or refinance now because interest rates are going through the roof. Well, the reality is they are rising. I don't think they're going through the roof right now. 4% is hardly the roof. However, people are asking, what is this gonna do to the market? And what should I do? Should I sell? Should I refinance or just stick tight? So I'm going to be answering these questions today and I'm gonna leave my prediction on how it's going to affect the market at the end. Hi, my name is Jamie Eklund and I'm a realtor here in the beautiful state of Colorado. On this channel, we talk about what it's like to live in Colorado. My primary goal is to help people who are thinking about moving here to Colorado have more education at their fingertips. So if that's you, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification to be notified next time I post a video. Now I get calls from people all the time asking me, Janie, what is it like to live in Colorado? And I try as hard as I can to give my honest opinion to people. The last thing I want somebody to do is to move to a city or a state and then they realize this wasn't what they thought it was gonna be like at all and then they're unhappy. Nobody wants that. So go ahead and reach out to me. If you're thinking of moving to Colorado, I'd love to talk to you and I'd love to answer any questions you might have about living here in Colorado. Now today we are talking about what is interest rates or how are interest rates going to affect the market? Now this is what I've seen as a realtor here in 2022 thus far. Things are still really, really hot if you're a seller. Things can be very frustrating if you're a buyer. That's kind of the reality of the market that we have. I haven't seen a significant change so far, but we're still really early in the year, so who, who knows? The inventory is still really low, the demand is still really high, and interest rates are continuing to climb. Now they've gone from 3% is kind of the, the and I'm this is a 30 year mortgage that I'm kind of basing this on and I'm not a lender so at the end of the day you know take what I say with a grain of salt but they started at kind of a three percent and now they're all the way up to almost four percent and so what does that mean for you if you're looking to buy a house well the reality is that means that you can't afford quite as large of a house payment so what does that payment look like? So I, I ran a few numbers here. And so this is what it kind of looks like. If you have a $500,000 house or you're buying a $500,000 house, you're putting 20% down. That's what I'm making these uh, figures on with a 30 year mortgage. At 3%, your payment, this is just the, the principal, it's not, or just the, the payment, it's not interest and, and all that kind of stuff like that. This is just the payment. This is not going to include insurance or HOA or any mortgage insurance, stuff like that. This is just uh, principal and interest. That's all it is. And at 3%, you would be looking at a payment of $1,686, $1,686 a month. When that jumps up to 4%, you're looking at a payment of $1,910, $1,910. The difference between the two is about $224. That's really not that much. Now you may be saying, well, that's like more than I pay for internet and cable. Well, that, that could be very true. It's not a negligent amount of money. So there are going to be people out there that are gonna look at that and say, you know what? I don't want that additional $224 a month payment with the higher interest so they're going to decide to stay in their house and they're not going to go buy that five hundred thousand dollar property so how is this going to affect the market here in northern colorado well i think to answer that question we really need to understand what is driving the market and really the primary driver of our market has been growth people moving into the state or people, first time home buyers buying in the state. 
And so what's happening is we're seeing pockets where people are migrating to or growth is happening. And those people are buying houses and then they're pushing people out because prices are getting high enough where other people can't afford, you know, the boulders or the downtown Denver's or areas like that. So then they start moving to more affordable places to buy property. That's what's driving the growth that we've seen. And we need to understand that this is not a COVID thing. This happened well before before, excuse me, before COVID, when interest rates were actually at 4% like they are today. Now, back then, the average sales price was considerably lower than it is today. And the higher the sales price, the higher the interest, the higher the payment, right? So there is a little bit of a difference there. However, we need to understand that we're continuing to see that same growth today and so i don't think it's going to have a huge uh, difference in the market when it comes to slowing it down or maybe even making prices go down i think prices are going to continue to go up so here's my prediction on what this market is going to do here in northern colorado my prediction is this because interest rates are going up people can't afford to upgrade their house as easily. They may look at that, you know, that $224 a month payment and say, I don't want to do that. Or maybe they just don't qualify to do that. And so we're going to have fewer people upgrading their houses. Well, that's a good and a bad thing. One, we're going to have fewer buyers on the market, which is kind of a good thing because we don't have as much supply. But it's a double-edged sword because then we're also not going to have as much supply on the market either because they're not going to sell the house that they're moving from. Now, the problem I foresee is this. They're looking at buying a higher priced property, but they would be selling, in most cases, a lower priced property. So we don't have as much inventory now or won't have as much inventory in the lower price point that we would is if they were selling and buying a bigger property or a more expensive property. So I foresee that we're going to stay very congested in the lower price points and that's gonna cause them to appreciate at a fairly substantial rate. I think it'll probably be as substantial as we saw in 2021, which was no small percentage. It was a huge percentage. I think that's gonna to continue to go up. I think actually in the, maybe in the higher price points, we actually might see that slow down and that might actually go down a little bit or at least level out a bit. But we're still gonna have people in that lower price point that are gonna drive prices up. So eventually the appreciation is going to catch up on the lower priced houses and those people may end up buying a, a more expensive house because their house that they're selling is just that much more valuable. That's my thought. Honestly, you know, one percentage point, I don't think is that big of a deal. It's not insignificant, but it's not so significant that we're going to see a massive shift in this market. So I don't think we're gonna see that shift. Now, if you're thinking of selling your house, I actually just got done writing a book. Here's, here's the book here. It's how to sell your house, for top dollar, just five steps. It's a simple book. It's a short book, it's an easy read, but I wrote it because I'm sick and tired of seeing people leave money on the table. I wanna see people be able to sell their house for the most money they can. And so I'm giving the book away while supplies last, or you can go buy it on Amazon. I'm gonna put a link down in the description where you can uh, send me some contact information and I will ship this book directly to you. I hope it's helpful and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.